His message was to reveal, not reform. Reveal the secrets. Reveal secrets. It's the Word in the man. Hebrews 4 said that the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, a piercing even to the Son of the Lord, and a revealer of the secrets of the heart. This man is not a reformer. He's a revealer. Amen. Revealer of what? The mysteries of God. Amen. Where the church has got all tied up and everything. He says, come forth with the word of God and reveal the thing out. Because he is to restore the faith of the children back to the Father. Amen. The original Bible faith is to be restored by the seventh angel. Ah. Oh, how I love this. All the mysteries of the seals that the reformers never understood fully. See? Now, look at Malachi 4. Just a minute. Well, you just mark it down. He is a prophet and restores the original faith of the fathers. Now, we're looking for that person to appear on the scene. He'll be so humble. Uh, Ten millions times ten millions. Of, well, there will be a little group. <laughs> Understand. When, you remember the other day when John was supposed to come, prophesied a messenger before Christ come, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Malachi saw him. Look, the third chapter of Malachi is the coming of the Elijah that was to come and forerun the coming of Christ. You say, oh, no, no, Brother Grant, it's the fourth chapter. I beg your pardon. Jesus said it was the third chapter. Yeah. Now I take Saint, uh, you take Saint uh, Matthew, uh, the eleventh chapter, and the sixth verse. You'll, you'll say this: the eleventh chapter, I believe it's the sixth verse, four, fifth, or sixth, right along there. He said, uh, "If you can receive it," we're talking about John. This is he who was spoken of. I'll send my messenger before my face. I read Malachi three. Some of them try to plow to Malachi four. No, sir, that's not it. Notice Malachi 4, as soon as that messenger goes forth, the world is completely burned and the righteous walk out in the millennium of the ashes of it. So you see, if you put that being him back there, then, then the Bible told something that wasn't so. We've got 2,000 years and the world ain't burned up yet and the righteous living in it. So it's got to be in the future. Oh, and if you go here in Revelation and see what that messenger at the end of this age is supposed to do, then you'll see what it is. He must be a prophet. He's got to catch these ends that these reformers didn't see and place it in there. How can Matthew 28, 19 compare with Acts 2, 38 without the spiritual revelation of God? How can these people say that days of miracles are past and so forth like that and without revelation of God? The only way they'll ever know it. No one's right or wrong. But they've come through seminaries. I hope we have time to get into this. I want to hurry because I don't want to keep you here over a week. You know what I mean? When this uh, open these seals. I've got one day and I'd like to have prayer for the sick on that day if I could. Now look Malachi 4. He's a prophet and restores the original faith of the fathers. At the end time, when the tribulation period comes, now here's the little thing we're going to reverse back a minute, where the three and a half years are Daniel's 70 weeks, the last Half of Daniel's 70 weeks, which is three and one half years. Now, we, how many remembers that from the church ages? Yeah, the 70 weeks determined, look how perfect it was, that Messiah will come. And he'll be cut off for sacrifice in the midst of the week. And the obligation will cease. Then there is still three and a half years waited for the Messiah doctrine to the Jews. And God does not deal with the Jew and the Gentile at the same time. He deals with Israel as a nation, Gentile as an individual. He never taken the Gentiles for his bride. He's taken a people out of the Gentiles. Now he deals with Israel as a nation. And now there she sits right there now as a nation. I got a letter from Paul today, Paul Boyd. And he was telling me, he said, Brother Branham, how true it is. These Jews still have a funny feeling towards the Gentiles, no matter what's happened. Sure they will. They got to. When Martin Luther made the proclamation that all Jews are to be run off and their buildings burnt down because they were Antichrist. See? 
Martin Luther made that statement itself in his writing. Now, Hitler just fulfilled what Martin Luther said. Why did Martin Luther say that? Because he was a reformer, not a prophet. God, that my prophet blessed Israel. He said, whosoever blesses you will be blessed. Who curses you will be cursed. How can one prophet stand and deny what the other prophet said? You can't do it. It's got to be in harmony. But that's the reason they class. See, Germany is supposed to be a Christian nation. And the way they treated Israel, they still got a stick on their shoulder, and you can't blame them. But just remember, if the Jews sitting here, don't you worry, the day's coming. God can never forget them. They were blinded for our sake. He always said to the prophet, he, the prophet cried out, said, will you forget Israel? He said, take that measure stick and how high is the sky? How deep is the sea? He said, I couldn't measure. He said, never can I forget Israel. That's his people, his servants. And the Gentile is only a few taken out of there for his bride. That's exactly right. That's the bride. Now, the 70 weeks was determined. Perfectly, as Daniel said, that Messiah would come and would be cut off in the midst of the week. And Jesus prophesied three and a half years. Now, in the middle of this three and a half years of Daniel, in the middle of it is cut off, and now the last part is the tribulation period where the Gentile church is, all this is great, and I don't mean it, the bride goes in with the groom then after the millennium walks out upon the ashes of the wicked. Let me show you something here. This why we just got it in mind. Let's just show you what says. What the Bible says. And we can't deny this in the Word of God. If we do, then we're infidel. Amen. We we got to believe you say, I don't understand it, neither do I. But I'm looking for him to reveal it. Amen. Look. For behold a day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud like the Americans and so forth. Yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubbles. It's going to burn. And the day that cometh that shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, it shall leave them neither root or branch. I got eternal hell in there then. See, it's the last days when these things are being revealed. There's no place in the Bible that says hell's eternal. Thus, to, have, to be in an eternal hell, you'd have to have eternal life to stay there. There's only one form of eternal life, and that's what we're struggling for. Amen. Everything had a beginning, has an end. Hell was created for the devil and his angels and will be consumed and done away with. Amen. Right? Amen. See, but when this takes place, it neither leaves them root or branch. But unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth as uh, grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I will do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Where's the wicked going to be? That's the tribulation. Ashes. Remember the laws of Moses, which I commanded him in heart for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Amen. Here's the Old Testament closing out like that, and here's the New Testament closing out with the very same name. I go to keep it away. Then, look, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before that day comes, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. There you are. That's the word of the Lord. We promised it. It must come. And now, if you notice how this happens, it's beautiful how God does it. The bride goes forth and with the groom. And, and then after that, the wicked is burned with unquenchable fire. And after the world has been purified, reproduces itself. Everything has to do that. It has to go through a state of purification. Volcanic will break forth in that great last time. And the world will burst and belch and go forth and all these cesspools of sin and all that's up on the earth will be molded into nothing. It'll burn with such a fervent heat that will be like that bleach that sends the, the color of uh, the ink back into its original creation. So will the fire from God be so hot that will turn every 
filthy thing back to it, condition again when Satan and all sin is burned up and everything and then she'll come forth as beautiful as she was in the Garden of Eden. Right. Oh, that great hour laying just ahead of us. During the tribulation period, here's what I want you to notice. Now, a little thing I dropped in here. During this tribulation period, after the bride has been called out and the church goes through the tribulation period, the 144,000 is called Amen. by the two witnesses of Revelation 11. Amen. Now look, they have prophesied 1,203 score days, told in sackcloth. Now, we know this Roman calendar has, we got 28 days and sometimes 30 and 31, but actually the calendar reads this 30 days to every month. Amen. Right. And take a hundred, a thousand, two hundred and three score days and put thirty to it and see what you got. Amen. <laughs> three and one half years exactly on the dot. Amen. That's the time, that's a lot of time for the Messiah message to be preached to Israel like it was back there when he returns back Amen. and makes himself known in the symbol that when he comes, when Joseph was taken down into the country and was rejected by his brother, and because he was a spiritual man, he could see visions and interpret dreams. And when he did, he was taken down into the country and was sold for almost 30 pieces of silver. He portrayed Christ exactly because it was Christ's spirit. Notice what happened then. And notice that when he did this, he was put into prison. And one man was saved and the other lost. Exactly Jesus when he was in prison on the cross. One thief was saved and the other was lost. Exactly. Thrown into the grave, supposed to be dead, and was stuck up and ascended to the right hand of Pharaoh that nobody could see Pharaoh without seeing Joseph first. Jesus sets at the right hand of God and no man can come to the Father except for the Son. Amen. Right. I notice, every time Joseph left, when Joseph rose up from that right hand of that throne, watch! Glory! There sat Joseph at the right hand of Pharaoh. And when Joseph raised up to leave that throne, the trumpet sounded. Bow the knee, everybody! Joseph is coming. When that lamb leaves the throne yonder, on his days of mentorial work, when he leaves the throne up there and takes that book of redemption and walks forth, every knee will bow. There he is. Notice. And when Joseph, rejected by his brethren, he was given a Gentile wife. Potiphar give him, or Pharaoh give him uh, a Gentile wife. And he bore Gentile children, had Gentile and Jew. They give a great symbol that when Jacob was blessing him, Ephraim on one side and Manasseh on the other, he crossed his hands and give the younger child a blessing. And the two kids was added unto the twelve tribes, which is only ten at that time, and he blessed them in Jacob himself. And Joseph, his prophet's son, standing there, said, Father, you have done wrong. So if you put your right hand blessing on the young child, where it ought to went on the old, and he said, I know my hands is crossed, but God has crossed them. Amen. Why? Israel, having the rights to be a bride, rejected and sold her birthrights, and the, went from the old son, Israel, to the new Gentile, and the blessings went from there through the cross. Amen. Amen. But notice, after that, see, through that, when all he took his bride, but when them boys came down to buy food, oh, it's such a beautiful picture. I'm off on the seal, but I just got to say it. Because you'll get the picture better, I believe. Notice. Now, when he come down to buy food, you know, Joseph recognized him right away. And Joseph was the son of prosperity. No matter where he went, it always prospered. You wait till he comes to the earth again. Wait till our Joseph comes. The desert shall blossom as a rose. And the sun of rises rises with healing in his wings. Oh, right. All that cactus around Arizona will unfold into a beautiful tree. It'll be beautiful. Notice. Here he comes forth and he plays a little trick on him there. And he stands and he says, Is my father still living? See, you won't know if that boy's father was living. He said, Yes. You know that was his brother. But did you notice? 
when he got ready to reveal himself to his brother, and he found little Benjamin, which had been born since he had been gone. And that represents these Jews, there's 144,000 scattered right there now, since he's been gone. And when he returned, he said, uh, he looked at Benjamin, his heart was about to break. And remember that, they, they didn't know he could speak Hebrew. He was taking an interpreter. He acted like he's an Egyptian. See? And then when it was made known, he wanted to make himself known, he kept looking at little Benjamin. And remember, he dismissed his wife. She was in the palace. When he made himself known to his brethren, and the Gentile bride, the wife, after Jesus being rejected by his own people, he has taken a Gentile bride and will take her from here to the palace, to his father's house, and glory for the wedding supper, and will slip back down to make himself known to his brethren, oh, 144 yeah. 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 There he stands. And remember, look at the symbol perfectly. And when he come back, the word this was. He looked down to them and he said, uh, he said, uh, begin to look. And they begin to talk. They said, uh, now, Reuben, you know that we're in for it now. Yeah. See? Because, you know what we've done? We've got this boy in this fix. Now, we aren't just sold our brother. That was your brother sending them that mighty prince and they didn't know it. That's the reason Israel can't understand him today. Oh. And there's the hour yet to know it. Amen. And then, he said, no, he couldn't understand Hebrew, but he's listening right at it. <laughs> they said, now we're in for it. And Joseph, when he looked at him, he couldn't stand it no longer. I remember his wife and children was in the palace at the time. The saints going out. Out of the presence. And he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. And he ran over and grabbed the vision and fell on his neck and began to cry. And he made himself known. And then he said, now we know we got it coming. Well, we sold him. We was the one who sold him off. We was the one who tried to kill him. Now we know he'll kill us. He said, no, don't be angry with yourself. You only done it to preserve life. That's why God sent me down here. And when he makes himself known, the Bible says as we come to it, when he makes himself known to 144,000 there, the little Benjamin of the day, and the remnant of those Jews left there, when he makes himself known, they'll say, where did you get those scars? What are they doing in your hand? He said, oh, I got them in the house of my friend. <laughs> oh, then they'll realize that they have killed the Messiah. But what will he say? The same as Joseph did it. You did it to serve life. Don't uh, save life. Don't be angry with yourself. Because if the Gentiles would not have been brought in if the Jews hadn't have done that blindfolded trick. So he saved the life of the church for the things that they've done. So there you are. That's the reason today they can't understand this. It isn't the hour. No more we can understand these things until the time comes for it to be understood. Oh, my. Seven thunders of Revelation may show the bride how to prepare for the great translation faith. Now, let's hurry up because we haven't got about 15, 20 minutes yet. Now, what does this white horse mean? Let me read the I've been so far off. Excuse me for getting off my subject. But, but uh, uh, I'll read the verse again, the two verses. And I saw in the land that opened one of the seals, and I heard as it was a noise of thunder. Now one of the four beasts saying, Come see.